Hey everybody, it's Tom, and I wanted to come to you. I've been meaning to talk about this essay for a while. Wilfred Sellers, Philosophy and the Scientific Image of Man. It came out in the 60s, uh, middle 60s, I believe. I want to say 1960. You know, I'm not even going to guess. Um, I'll look it up and put it in the comments section. But it's a powerful piece in that it sets the stage for the controversies, the deep controversies, which attend um, questions uh, around science and its relationship to our political, our social, our cultural life. Even um, now, nearly 50 years, perhaps even more than 50 years onward from its composition. What Sellers articulates is that from the philosophical vantage, which is the vantage that essays to account for everything, at least in the sense that we try and discern a relationship or mutual orientation amongst disparate, diverse spheres of human identity, whether that be, say, more specific dimensions of science or history or art, etc., etc. How do all these approaches hang together? And even insofar as is possible, abstracting from the distinctive humanity of those approaches, how do different facets of the world fit together? So given that imperative to understand everything within a, a broad scope, to that imperative to strive after a unifying or singular vision of reality, the person assuming this philosophical vantage is confronted with a decision in our present day. The decision is as to the relationship between the image of humanity that comes forth from the scientific project on one hand, which is what Selford, uh, which is what Sellers, Wilfred Sellers terms the scientific image of man. And the historical, what he calls manifest image, the image in which we came first to know ourselves as distinctively human. This latter image is characterized by seeing the human experience as fundamentally a personal experience. We are fundamentally persons. And by that commitment, what, suffered in, uh, what Sellers intends is that we are entities that can engage the world in a deliberate manner with sensitivity to being a portion and parcel of a community. He stipulates that this approach, which also is connected with taking our subjective experience uh, and, and granting it a, a certain weight, is ultimately incommensurable. Well, no, I'm sorry, let me, let me revise that. Is in deep tension with the scientific image. And that tension arises from various quarters. On an, on an almost technical level, a serious problem arises with issues around consciousness and qualitative experience. The continuous aspect of that experience, which is manifest in particular with sensory qualities such as color, uh, but not exclusively, and the seemingly irreducible facet of those kinds of entities, qualitative entities, quality as they are, two barely material terms. The, 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 the discursive account of reality seems incapable of accommodating this uh, portion of being. There are additionally the categories of the aesthetic and the moral, which are in a like manner refractory to such reduction, because the aesthetic and the ethical or the moral are cherry 
to be uh, reframed after a fashion of uh, mathematical or statistical uh, aridity. There's, there's a richness, there's a fullness to them which simply doesn't uh, fit into the box of the uh, quantitative. And it is the effort to assimilate things to an essentially quantitative statistical mechanical account that is the hallmark of the scientific image. So a dilemma is, uh, a, a, we arrive at a dilemma as to you know, where, where is the reality? Where does the reality reside? Now, Seller's proposal is that this is a mistake to put the matter in a fashion which suggests a mutual exclusivity. What he proposes is that you can actually conjoin these two different images, the manifest and the scientific, in a manner analogous with the attainment of a stereoscopic vision, like a binocular, right? Where you take two different perspectives and by fusing them in a correct manner, you actually attain an encounter with depth that transcends what is a current with one, within simply one or the other uh, exclusively. And that's great as far as it goes, but the problem with Seller's account specifically is that he wants to grant a, um, you could call it a metaphysical primacy to the scientific. And he, and he says this quite explicitly. He wants to consider the scientific image of man in the world as a complete and ultimately adequate image. The challenges which we have described notwithstanding. And uh, he feels that this can be done essentially by reconstruing the vocabulary that we use in the domain of the manifest image as a, sort of a fundamentally useful heuristic, uh, just a, a kind of conventional fiction that can be translated into scientific terms, but which um, ultimately is incomplete compared to those scientific terms. And I, I actually demur or disagree sharply with Sellers on this point for various reasons, um, some of which I've talked about in other videos with respect to the irreducibility of consciousness. Um, and similarly, uh, a sense of how categories of aesthetic and, and moral character are simply not amenable to that kind of, and I hate to use the word again, but to that kind of reduction. Uh, and I think maybe that what underlies all of that, to put it very loosely, is the, the issue of the experiential. The exp and and, and the, the claim that it is within the space of experience that reality is ultimately encountered and it is the space within which we must live. The problem with granting such force to the scientific image is that it deprives uh, the person, in my view, of appreciating the significance of the experiential by in its stead imposing an aggregate of abstractions that ultimately are only of very narrow utility when slated against the challenge of life, the challenge to attain to an ideal, whether you describe that ideal as, as wisdom or fullness, eudaimonia, happiness, fulfillment, but what beauty, sublimity, you know, whatever tact you want to use, at the end of the day, as splendid as something like Einstein's accounting of relativity may be, as uh, astonishing as are the uh, mathematical apparatuses that underlie uh, quantum mechanics can, can be, 
as um, as compelling as the findings of certain research in biology may be, at the end of the day, these do not grant one what is necessary to encounter the real. And uh, thus, I am of the mind that their value is ultimately derivative, secondary, or auxiliary. That it is um, not within the space of the scientific or the merely discursive that we can find what it is, what it means to live. Which is a, actually a somewhat countercultural claim. Uh, and of course, <laughs> I'm perfectly happy with that, given the um, rather morbid state of our contemporary culture. That being said, uh, I, I still exhort you to check out Sello's account, which I think is remarkably honest in that uh, he stakes his position while at the same time acknowledging the challenges which are encountered by that position. So go, go check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. And uh, regardless of where you stand in the debate, which I've only sketched here, uh, I think it, it's impressive how well he set the stage for the conversation in that essay. So uh, once again, Wilfred Sellers, Philosophy and the Scientific Image of Man. This has been Tom. Uh, just wanted to put this out there to, to sort of recollect people to that fine uh, writing by a very interesting uh, figure in his own right, Wilfred Sellers. So thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you guys on, uh, on the flip side. Ciao.